partner together for the expenditure of the funds. The executive director of the trust, Lindsay Cannon, is here tonight and can answer any questions you may have as well. Thank you, Meredith. All right, board, that's our only speaker for the item. Uh, entertain discussion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I yes, can. Yes, sir. Yep. I've got called by several people today on this, starting with Mr. Peden. Yes, sir. How it's written. Okay. Provide answers What's to your, any questions yeah. you may have. Yeah. Under the staff statute. perspective. I'm sorry. I'm, and the duration. A little bit with the trust are important. If you listen to Robert F. Kennedy the other day, which I wholeheartedly agree with him, uh, we have a childhood epidemic of illness in this country. It's not a joke. We have more kids now than ever that have hypertension and diabetes and things that uh, we never saw before. And it's not just about programs. It's about images. It's about how kids get to school. Uh, blighted areas, when kids have to walk up Old Corryfield Road and see garbage, which I deal with every week, you can ask Mr. Higdon and Wes, is something that uh, affects a child's self-worth. Now, I'm all for education, 100%. But also, the sheriff was the second person I wanted to mention. He called me and asked me to mention this. He absolutely wants to use some of the funds for cameras for safety issues. And I, we do have, we, we do see crime in a lot of areas. I don't know, some would say that's not really what the Children's Trust is for. He obviously thinks it is. I mean, I guess it's a decision for the board. Um, Lindsay, I appreciate what you're doing. I mean that, and I, I um, Park, we don't have multi-use film. I mean, and how many people asked me to do that? Now that's the amount of money that we're asking. I think you guys have just under $13 million in your annual budget. Is that close? 10, okay, I, I'm off a little bit. The, the annual amount of this, if I'm correct, is 450,000, is that correct? Uh, Allison or West? Okay. I think that's approximately the, the number. So it's, it's, it's in, in the scope of things, it does eat into your budget, but it's like less than 5%. So I, I want to support the Children's Trust, but I don't really believe this would hurt the trust um, to a point where we couldn't do programs as well as help the neighborhood services. That's all I have, Mr. Are being the best stewards that we can possibly be we've obviously had growing pains but you know i probably was one of the few elected officials that publicly supported a tax increase and and i did that on all the collateral material uh and so i know that we're doing great work uh at the trust mike i i, I do support you know your infrastructure uh in your district i, I would say uh to jeff's district uh bellevue park needs to take CRA dollars and stop having a one way in, one way out when a, a, a person has been killed. Uh, I sit on the trust, so I was well aware uh, when the sheriff uh, petitioned, and it was certainly before uh, Ms. Lindsay's uh, uh, tenure uh, as, the executive direct, uh, as the executive director. Uh, but I do recognize that safety is important. Sidewalks to schools are important. Playgrounds are important. Lighted parks are important. Uh, this weekend, probably at Roger Scott Tennis Court uh, NEP, uh, we had a prominent person whose life was threatened and not enough lighting and not enough access. Uh, and uh, at Pine Forest, we had over, you know, uh, and I see Miss Ray out there, she's a former principal, uh, but we had, you know, probably two, 300 young ladies who were fighting. Uh, and thankfully, uh, Sheriff Simmons had cameras that was able to identify some of uh, uh, the culprits, uh, not all of them. So uh, safety is important. And so I, I think it's important, Mike, how, to figure out, it's called the Scammy County Children Trust, how Scammy County works together. I think it's important for our CRAs to be able to walk. Kids need to be able to uh, walk and live in a safe neighborhood. Uh, the children from Montclair, uh, although we put you know, probably a couple million dollars into the Boys and Girls Club for that, uh, a, a grandmother was killed, children were shot, young people jumped off a bridge. Uh, and children are being traumatized uh, in these pockets of poverty uh, because of the lack of safety. And so unfortunately, law enforcement can't do it itself. So I certainly think that it's not only uh, the soft skills and, and, and the social skills that we, we take, but if a child is not safe, then that's not important. And so I, I think it's important, Mike, I, I concur with you. Um, how do we recognize, how do we work together in town? Right. I mean, here's the real reality of it uh, is 
at these little league football games, these little league basketball, baseball games at these community centers, at our libraries. There's going, in particular, in our pockets of poverty and CRAs, we, should, we have metal detectors to come in this building for our safety. We have metal detectors to go into the courthouse for their safety. We have to have the same thing for the safety of people that are going into our community centers, into our ball fields, because people are walking in with guns, unfortunately. I mean, it's a, it's a systemic problem, uh, but we're going to put those resources. Uh, these little leagues can't function uh, because to get a deputy is 50 to $60 an hour uh, that we pay for here. I mean, uh, they have to sell a lot of hot dogs, hamburgers to be able to pay a deputy $50, $60 an hour. So I, too, had a, a great conversation uh, with the sheriff today and certainly recognize uh, his position and, you know, the conversation here on the dais. But I think that safety is important. So thank you, Mike, for bringing that. Board, any, any other comments? I, so, you know, when you look at the, you know, where the CRAs are, you know, where the CRAs have, have impact, the cash flow related to the, you know, to the CRAs in District 5 is, is very minimal. You know, out of it, it's not. Um, you know, that's not something that moves moves the needle. I will. Uh, you know, it's a case where it's, you know, not directly uh, affecting my constituents a tremendous amount on, uh, you know, on the revenue of the cash flow side. So, uh, you know, certainly recognize that two of uh, two of our colleagues have, you know, have the vast majority of the CRA uh, of the CRA districts as well as the CRA cash flow, and I'm, you know, willing to support what the, uh, you know, what those two folks want to do. So. Um, but I'm going to support you, Lumen, and I spoke to the sheriff as well. Public safety is very important. The cameras solve a lot of crimes, have, prevent a lot of issues. So, um, and I think, as Commissioner Kohler said, a 5% reduction um, for all the good that we'll do in those CRAs is, is probably uh, good policy going forward. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I mean, I hadn't really made a decision, but Wes, well, how much did we allocate to the sheriff for that real-time camera system? It's $400,000. Oh, wow. And those dollars were taken from where? The CRA, Montclair Area CRA. Oh. Okay. All right. All right, Board, how, how do you want to dispose of the item? I'll, I'll propose the motion, but before I do, I'd like to, I want to give some kudos on something else that the Board reflects the Children's Trust, and um, it's important. Lindsay's been working really hard with the Navy Fight Academy. I know you two had brought this up previously. They put a proposal together. Admiral Cozad, I think I mentioned this before. Um, he called me a couple times. I, we just couldn't connect. But I really hope that the Children's Trust can do something with this for some of the kids throughout all of our districts. Um, I, I've read the proposal. I know it's, it's, it would take a little, I think about 1.3 million out of the Children's Trust for their operationals to do this. But um, I, we have a wonderful resource in our community and uh, it would really get a lot of exposure with our local children if they got to experience it. So. And, and, and Mike, I, I mean, regardless, and, and, and maybe it's uncomfortable and unpopular to talk about, I mean, and, you know, I've had conversations with the sheriff and, you know, to put the honest all on, on the children's tr trust is unfair. I mean, it has to be on all the, on the school district, the city and the county, but it's not a pandemic, but it's an epidemic not only in District 3. People like to say it's just District 3 that's having these shootings. Kids <laughs> didn't jump off the bridge in District 3. Well, we I mean, there, there are shootings in District 5. <laughs> there, are district, there are shootings in District 2, District 4. I, I mean, uh, uh, the vast amount uh, of young African-American males who are being shot every single day, and I, I, I get it, may not you know, directly affect you guys' constituencies as it does mine, but I can tell you it has a direct impact on tourism. It has a direct impact on economic development, the amount of shootings that we're having. And it's not concentrated into just one uh, geographical area. If, if children are getting killed in Montclair, I, I promise you if they get, they'll get killed in one part of Mayfair, they're gonna get killed in another part of Mayfair. And if they get killed on West Jackson, they're gonna get killed on Gulf Beach Highway. So I think that, you know, that is a, <laughs> it is a systemic problem uh, when you're having in Wedgwood in a community center. Anywhere else in the country, you had seven children to get shot, two children to get killed, and one child is probably going to be paralyzed. If that doesn't cause alarm for a, a board, then what will? I mean, how, how much more? How much more? How many more children have to get shot before we say it's a priority? 
Uh, and it bleeds over. Eventually, it just won't be young black children getting shot. It's going to be other people that are going to get killed if we don't put some plans in place uh, for protection. And so, you know, that's one of the conversations I've had with the sheriff. Kids can't even go to a high school football game. Kids can't even go to a little league football game because of the senseless acts of violence. And, you know, obviously, I mean, home environment, parenting, all those things are important. And uh, Lindsay's doing a great job at working with those programs. Uh, but unfortunately, the after school program, the SALT programs really don't encompass, you know, we know the generation. You can go to the Juvenile Justice Center and you can look at the age of those kids, 15 to 19, 15 to 20, are really of those kids that we have to laser target and do programs like you're doing. If I can get him in the flight academy when he's 15, I promise you he's not going to be shooting anybody because his aspirations and his goals are going to be a lot different. So anyway, I'm like, I, and I only said that to say that oftentimes people like to concentrate that the violence happens in District 3. I, I promise you, you can get the hot map from Chip Oh, yeah. All the shooting is not just happening in District 3. Quite frankly, District 3 is a safe district to live in. You know, I mean, we have our pockets, uh, but District 3 is not the only district that's having problems. I think all of us have problems. I mean, Steve has them in the North End. We, we have, I mean, he may not have CRAs. But right. I Motion, and since you're on the board at, and see where we end up. Deny ECT. Can I speak on this before? I meant to sign up for some reason or another. Signed up for <sighs> yes. <laughs> Thank you much, Chair. Yes. Larry Downs, Jr. Uh, I, I, I hear y'all. I hear y'all. I hear everything you're saying. Uh, problem is, we're, we're, we're uh, the number one problem is, isn't y'all, isn't safety. We know this. It's something y'all can't fix. School district ain't going to fix. It's what I call the three Ps. Piss poor parenting. That's the problem. I don't care how much money y'all waste of ours trying to keep this illusion of safety. It's an illusion. It, it, and you can say, uh, uh, so it's the black people, it's the brown people, it's the white people. It don't matter. Oh, that's ridiculousness. This is the three Ps is the problem, and y'all can't pour enough money into it to fix it. The government, but this big, big daddy governance, which y'all trying to make bigger, trying to make bigger every day, that's what's caused this problem. The more welfare that's handed out, and it's all with good intention, I get it. It's all with good intention. But every road paved with good intention, it doesn't seem to be yielding any good results. And I don't want to live in a country where Every, uh, eye in the sky, big daddy everywhere. I mean, we went, we went from give me liberty or give me death, Patrick Henry, to if it'll save one life, give up all your liberty. Do y'all hear? Do you hear yourselves? Now, I know it makes you sound like you really care. It doesn't alter the situation at all. That's just my two cents. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Commissioner Kohler. Uh, Mr. Downs, um, the only thing I'd like to say, the voters voted for this. You probably didn't. No. I know, but the voters did. So we have to deal with the money that came in and the statute says we can do it. So when the vote comes up again, maybe it won't pass. But right now we have to deal with the millage that's out there. And I mean, I, I completely understand what you're saying, but the voters passed this. All right, Andrew. The voters Larry, Larry, please not forget Andrew Bluer, 6101, <clears throat> Minus Place. Hey, Lumen May, there is a problem, but the problem is, is the government. The government is separating families. If you didn't get, hand out all the money for the single parents or whatever, there would be a father figure in the home. And if you had a father figure in the home, you had a father, right? Did he let you go astray? No. So that's what we need. The whole United States is to bring the fathers back in the home. Don't separate families, and the children will listen to a father figure. And that's all I got to say. All right. Thank Andrew, and I, I would promise you that we have a very active program committee at the Children's Trust, and fatherhood initiatives and no programs are important. And I, I think that you, you'll see some programs coming out of the trust that. Seek to, seek to do that. And, and I agree. I agree we should have fatherhood programs, Andrew. That's probably the first thing we agreed on, but I agree. All right. Commissioner Kohler, you have the floor. 
Uh, we're, I'll go ahead and propose the motion. Then. Okay. Uh, proposed deny ECD's request for an exemption for payment of tax increment reviews occurring for the preceding three years tax in the principal amount of $1,134,025 and require payment of invoice number 022024 within 45 days. Authorize a waiver of any penalties and interest occurring for the outstanding tax increment revenues owned by the preceding three years. Deny ECT's request for an exemption for payment of tax increment revenues for future years tax years and adopt staff findings regarding the seven factors and direct staff to prepare a written analysis specifying the rationale for the denial to include staff findings in the list of CRA projects as examples of how the relevant redevelopment plan benefits the purpose for which the ECT has created. All right, is there a second? I'll second it. All right. Madam Council, I, I, I serve on the Children Trust Board. So am I eligible to vote for this? Yes, sir, you are. You're obligated. We are obligated to have a commissioner on that board by state statute. I am very comfortable that you can vote on this item. Okay. I'm, I'm perplexed, but that's fine. Okay. Right. Any other discussion? All right. Hearing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Item passes four to zero. Madam Clerk, uh, I do have a couple of speakers, speakers on your items to uh, to dispense before we take them. So, clerk's report.